Hi everyone, good evening. So uh, today we are discussing the next drug in our neuropharmacology series that is yet again another anti seizure medication that is Lamotrigine. So coming to the mechanism of action of Lamotrigine, so it acts by inhibiting both the voltage gated sodium as well as the calcium channels and it also has minor mechanism of actions by suppressing the NMDA receptor as well as the AMPA receptor which are both subtypes of glutamate receptors. So they are both subtypes of glutamate receptors and it also blocks the GABA A receptor and has a weak antagonistic action on the 5-HT3 serotonergic receptor. Now coming to the indications, so as usual I have marked the FD approved indications in orange. So it is approved as an adjunctive therapy for both primary generalized tonic-clonic seizures as well as in Lennox gastrot syndrome and it is approved both as a monotherapy as well as an adjunctive therapy in focal seizures. And it also has many off-label uses has many off-label uses so it can be used as a prophylactic medication in migraine headaches and it is the drug of choice it is the drug of choice for sunk headache so sunk headache is actually a type of trigeminal autonomic cephalalgia so the acute treatment modality for sunk the problem is actually the headaches are so short lasting so by the time we actually load this medication and give it by the time the headache is already disappeared but anyways the acute treatment of sunk headache is actually IV lidocaine and the preventive therapy the preventive therapy and the drug of choice for the preventive therapy of sunk is lamotrigine even though it is not FT approved for this it is the drug of choice as a prophylactic agent for sunk headaches and it also has use in post stroke pain uh, that is post thalamic pain as well as in trigeminal neuralgia and probably uh, has a role over here by, the, by its mechanism of action on the sodium channels okay and it also has a role in bipolar disorder so remember that the FDA approved indications is for adjunctive therapy in primary generalized tonic clonic seizures as well as in Lennox gastrot syndrome and both as a monotherapy as well as an adjunctive therapy in focal seizures now coming to the dosing formulations so we have the immediate release tablets the immediate release tablets come in 25 100 150 and 200 milligram tablets and then we have the chewable dispersion tablets which come in 2 5 and 25 milligrams and the oral disintegrating tablets which come yet again at 25, 50, 100 and 200 milligram formulations and the extended release formulation which comes at 25, 50, 100 and 200 milligrams. So this is the different uh, dosing formulations that are available for lamotrigine and how do you dosing? So dosing of lamotrigine is very very important and remember that the key to dosing is the key to dosing is slow up titration. So unlike our other medications, it is vital that we slowly uptrate lamotrigine till we reach the target dose or the expected clinical uh, outcome that is reduced seizures. And the main reason for this is to reduce the risk of the deadly rash. Okay, Remember that not all rashes associated with lamotrigine are serious rashes. It can be benign, but it's very tough to differentiate it. So usually when the patient is developing a rash on lamotrigine, you'll have to stop the medication. And the best modality to avoid or reduce the risk of this rash is by slowly uptrating lamotrigin. So how do we do that? So in case we are starting lamotrigin as a monotherapy, okay, we are giving only lamotrigin and not giving any other anti seizure medications. So initially how we start is, so first we start at 25 milligrams HS, okay. So we started at the night to avoid increased sedation. And what we do is we will continue this for the next two weeks. Then in the third week, we will make this 25 milligrams twice daily. Either you can make it 25 milligrams twice daily or we can give it as 50 milligrams in the night. Better to give it in the night to avoid unnecessary sedation. So in the third week onwards, we will be giving 50 milligrams HS. And we will continue this for the next two weeks. And by the time we reach the fifth week, we will increase the dose to 50 milligrams twice daily. So we will reach 100 milligrams per day. So at the fifth week, we are at 100 milligrams per day. And after this, further increases will be at 50 milligram per day. Okay, you can add around 50 milligram per day every one to two weeks. And we keep doing this till we get the expected clinical outcome that is seizure control, or we reach the maximum dose or the target dose of 500 milligrams per day. 
number 500 milligrams per day is the target dose only when you're using lamotrigin as a monotherapeutic agent not in combination with other drugs okay so this is how we have to slowly upgrade lamotrigin and as i mentioned earlier if the total dose is less than 50 milligrams per day please prefer to give the medication in the night to avoid unnecessary sedation but however if it is more than 100 milligrams per day we can start for we can start giving it as a bd dosing now when we combine it with valproate so this can uh, complicate things a little bit so actually what valproate does is it actually increases the levels of lamotrigine so both of them have a synergistic activity okay so valproate increases the level of lamotrigine so you have a patient with epilepsy who is already on sodium valproate and you're going to add lamotrigine as an adjunct of therapy it is important that we have to be very slow you have to be very slow while upgrading the medication dosage and let's see how we're going to do it so here instead of that starting as 25 milligrams hs here we will be giving 25 milligrams every alternate days so we'll start at 25 milligrams alternate days and we will continue this for the next two weeks and in the third week we will give 25 milligrams one tablet in the night that is hs this is from the third week onwards and yet we will continue this for another two weeks then in the fifth week we will make it 50 milligrams hs in the night from the fifth week and any further increases after this we can add 50 milligrams per day every one to two weeks but note over here here the target dose the maximum dose is 200 milligrams per day so if you're going to give lamotrigin alone it is only 500 milligrams per day but in combination with valproate the maximum dose is 200 milligrams per day so either you can reach this 200 milligrams or till we reach the desired clinical effect that is seizure control we can stop increasing the dosage and in case for some reason you are going to stop or lower the dose of valproate please don't forget to increase the lamotrigin dose okay because once you stop or lower valproate the lamotrigin levels will not be as high as it was initially and we'll have to increase it as we would do so for monotherapy and in the contrary when we are giving lam uh, lamotrigine along with other inducing agents like phenobarbitone carbamazepine or phenytoin here we'll have to start at a little higher dose and also increase it a little faster so here we will start at 50 milligrams hs and then we will increase it to 50 milligrams bd after two weeks it will be increase it to 50 milligrams BD after two weeks and further increases by 100 milligrams per day every one to two weeks till we reach the target dose of 300 to 500 milligrams per day. So the take home point is slow upgradation of lamotrigine, especially when the patient is on sodium valproate and the maximum dose is 500 milligrams per day as a monotherapy and 200 milligrams per day if it is given as a combination with valproate. So the reason for such a important slow titration is to avoid or to dec decrease the risk of rash which is the most problematic adverse event with lamotrigine and remember that for some reason if your patient has stopped lamotrigine for a few days then again we'll have to start from scare one okay so the patient is already on 100 mg or 200 mg per day and they have stopped it for a week you again have to start from 25 milligrams hs then make it 50 mg hs and you have to slowly start start updating it from start from square one now coming to the adverse drug reactions so i'm over emphasizing this again and again rash is the most important one around 5 to 10 percentage of patients can have this rash remember that this rash can be benign or it could be a forebearer of more serious dermatological reactions like a steven johnson syndrome or toxic epidermal necrolysis or even a systemic hypersensitive reaction like dress okay so we don't know whether this rash is going to be benign or a more sinister cause of rash so in case of patients develop a rash please stop the medication and the risk of rash is much higher in the pediatric population this is very very important a very very important consideration and also on patients who are on valproate obviously because lamotrigine levels are higher on patients with valproate and when we are not following the slow upgradation and you fastly escalate the dosage so these are three important risk factors for a higher risk of developing the rash and like the other anti-seizure medications cns depression in the form of sedation ataxia double vision headache tremor and sometimes in contrary to sedation even insomnia can occur but remember that uh, sedation with, with regard to lamotrigine is somewhat less compared to the classical anti-seizure medications and GI side effects can take the form of nausea vomiting abdominal pain and constipation and in the pediatric population it can also cause a flu-like syndrome pharyngitis and sometimes even an aseptic meningitis and as i mentioned earlier rash can sometimes be a more sinister dermatological reaction in the form of a steven johnson syndrome or a, to a toxic epidermal necrolysis and even a dress and other uh, rare adverse reactions can be hematological and this can take the form of uh, neutropenia agranulocytosis pancytopenia 
pure red cell aplasia, aplastic anemia, and even HLH. And lama mutagen can also cause certain uh, depressive tendencies and also can cause suicidal ideation or suicidal tendencies. Coming to the pharmacokinetics, is not significant cytochrome P450 system metabolism. It's predominantly glucuronide acid, uh, glucuronic acid conjugation, and the overall bioavailability of lamotrigine is good. It is 98 percentage, and the half life is variable. Okay, so the half life of lamotrigine is variable. It depends whether the patient is on monotherapy or on a polypharmacy. So if the patient is taking only lamotrigine, the elimination half life is 33 hours. But in case the patient is taking it along with valparate, as I mentioned earlier, it's going to be much higher at 59 hours. And if the patient is taking it with enzyme inducers like carbamazepin or phenytoin or phenobarbital, that time it is much less, it is 14 hours and it has a predominant renal excretion. Now come to the drug interactions, again overemphasizing just like the rash, valparate increases lamotrigine levels. So please never forget this. And enzyme inducers are going to decrease the lamotrigine levels. So in contrary to valparate, enzyme inducers are going to decrease the lamotrigine levels and these are commonly phenobarbital, phenytoin, carbamazepin and rifampicin. It's very common for these drugs to also be prescribed with lamotrigine because lamotrigine is usually given as an adjunctive therapy. And another over very important point is estrogen. Okay, So estrogen decreases the lamotrigine levels. So this is two important implications. So when your patient on lamotrigine needs some form of contraception, OCPs is best avoided because it can cause decreased lamotrigine levels and therapeutic failure. So we have to pre prefer something else like a intrauterine device or barrier methods. So please avoid avoid oral contraceptive pills in patients on lamotrigine and in pregnancy. Another important in pregnancy where we're going to have higher estrogen levels. So in pregnancy also we're going to have decreased lamotrigine levels. So it's important that we might actually need to uh, check the lamotrigin levels and if needed we might have to increase the dosage of lamotrigin if the lamotrigin levels are subtherapeutic. So both pregnancy as well as OCPs can decrease the levels of lamotrigin and cause therapeutic failure. Now coming to dose adjustment, renal impairment is only needed in severe renal impairment when the creatinine clearance is less than 30 ml per, per minute and uh, lamotrigin is actually mildly dialysable but however, uh, there is no need for a supplemental dosage after hemodialysis, like in uh, need, like in lacosamide. It is mildly dialysable, but uh, no addition, no supplemental dose is needed, and dose reduction is only needed in case of severe renal impairment. And similarly, in hepatic impairment, dose reduction is only warranted in moderate to severe hepatic impairment, and the dose reduction in this scenario will be 25 percentage reduction. But if the patient is having a decompensated decompensated liver disease that time we might have to reduce the dose by 50 percentage uh, yes the pregnancy is category c and has to be avoided unless warranted so but compared to the other anti seizure medications like phenytoin or sodium valparate uh, lamotrigine just like levetiracetam is relatively more safer and lesser teratogenic and another important consideration as i mentioned uh, earlier is the lamotrigine levels can reduce during pregnancy so it's important that we have a drug level monitoring and increase the dose of lamotrigin appropriately. Periconception folic acid is a must and 40 to 80 percentage of the blood levels of lamotrigin will be secreted into the breast milk and sometimes can cause hypotonia or drowsininess in the breastfeeding infant. So unless the risk, uh, risk the benefit ratio warrants so, uh, it is best avoided in breastfeeding. So this is about lamotrigin. We will meet in the next talk.